we're going to get started. And hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, another weekly episode of ERP, which I've decided tonight stands for Essential Essential Roomba Pointers, because that just sounds painful. Damn. I'm imagining that Roomba with a knife taped to it. No, no, I, I was thinking, uh, like, tips and tricks on how to use your Roomba. Oh! <laughs> well, two types of people! You can tell who the DM is, because I just have a stat block here for a Roomba with a dagger. Um... <laughs> Let me write that down. His name Roomba is with Pointy. A <laughs> Pointy Roomba. All oh, right. So, Tanner, you guessed it was Corey who did that one, but it was, it was you. Yeah. yeah. It was either you or Corey, but twas you. Twas I. So, recapping last session. <clears throat> After disposing of the mess you made of a troll um, aboard the Ashen Heart, uh, you noticed... Off in the distance, Alaster, a man drowning in the Jade Basin. After rescuing him, he introduced his name as Malcolm and kind of uh, talked him up a little bit, to which he went downstairs, got some food. Zaz, you followed him. Um, you noticed that this, this Malcolm was mysteriously watching Zane fairly closely. Uh, later on in your travel, you looked up and noticed the shape of a bird circling above you which followed you for several hours which was later revealed to be not one but two rocks uh aerial demonic entity after uh dispatching the rocks uh, zane you questioned uh malcolm um in regards to his connection with your patron as well as the flock after he cast an eldritch blast identical to yours uh the Conversation didn't quite go as planned, uh, which is now only known to Zane and Zaz, who befriended a tiny little mushroom in the corner, who at one point also decided his name was Zaz too. Um, after hopping aboard the mothership, uh, he later decided his name was Harry. So Zaz, make sure that you have him written down on your character sheet. Done, uh, done. Perfect. Uh, docking in Redwater, uh, Quirin, you said goodbye to your mother who, refusing to see the path in which you follow, hopped on the ship opposite uh, the one of the, uh, the dock of the Ashen Heart, um, which was taking off to Sar Lavar, which most of you are aware of. Uh, Quirin, maybe not so much, and this is something I kind of glazed over. You know Sar Lavar is another continent. About three weeks sail to the south? So far away. Uh, Alaster, uh, with the help of Mo, you strong-armed Almer, the uh, captain of the Ashen Heart, um, out of his package, which he instructed you to just deliver to a place called Deep Blades, um, which is in the remains of Redwater. Heading over to the Dockmaster, you registered, some of you with real names, some of you with false names, um, and met a uh, happy, well, soon to be happy NPC <laughs> known as Faith, uh, who is deaf, which only Zane could communicate with, assisting her in retrieving her brand new golden retriever puppy. Heading into the city, uh, Zane, looking out over the crowd, you felt a small scratching at your leg. You heard a small <coughs> coughing sound as you looked down to see your childhood dog, Orville. And chasing after him was a tiefling almost identical to Zane himself, except with a stern Tom Selleck-like mustache, who exclaimed Zane, to which Zane responded simply with, Dad? And that's where we pick up. So we are aware that there was a pizza coming for Zane. <laughs> so, Wait, already? Already, apparently. She just got, she just got here. I, <laughs> Zane, yeah, pizza already. It's Domino's in Redwater. Yeah. Fantastic. No. No, uh, they've it's shit. They've only got Papa John's. <laughs> well, there goes our sponsors. Cleric um, John's. <laughs> Cleric John's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is he just as racist? Anywho. Um, <laughs> so Zane is still holding Orville in your, in, your, in your hands. Kind of up like you'd hold a baby as you're about to do the rocket ship thing. You look over. You see... Arthur, Sinedius, 
standing there. He has a, a book pouch on, um, kind of like a leather satchel on one side. He's holding um, a bouquet of flowers in one hand, and he has a piece of paper in the other. And he's, he's frozen in place. Um, he's just kind of staring at you, and uh, Zane, you see his eyes are starting to water. Don't don't cry, and I put my hand on his shoulder. He, he, kind, of, <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks at you, and he goes, We, you, wh- where have you been? Um, a little ways away. No, no, not too far. Zane, we, we, we buried, we had you buried. What? Oh, there's been students going missing from the college for months writing notes to their family and disappearing, never to return. Most (laughs) Where have you been? I'm sorry. He reaches out and gives you just the the sternest hug. (laughs) Just like squeezing you. Mm -hmm. Looks at you and goes, don't you ever leave again. I just pat his back. Um, uh, he kind of looks down at the paper. He goes, right. Uh, I, uh, he, he's at a loss for words. He doesn't know what to do. He's just seen a ghost, effectively. Um, I'm, I'm here to pick something up for, uh, uh, for the dean. And kind of looks down at the flowers and and I'm here to to, uh, to visit your sister. And Zane's face kind of goes white, as far as a purple-skinned tiefling's white can go. Kind of. As this conversation is going on, um, the rest of you, um, at this point, while they're off, kind of far off, and you see Zane just picks up this dog, there's kind of an exchange, and now there's almost... Zane and what you expect Zane in like 35 years to look like hugging. Um, you're all kind of standing there, still just a little way away from the Dockmaster. Uh, and you kind of hear a uh, laster. You feel a small tug um, on your armor. And you look down and you see uh, um, Evandra uh, looking up at you, uh, shortly joined by her father. Oh, hello, sweetheart. How are you? I'm good. Um, who's that? Pointing to uh, Zane and and Arthur. Uh, well, we've got Zane, and um, uh, I I believe that's uh, a relative of Zane's. Um, um, other than that, I'm not quite sure. I'm I'm as stumped as you are. Okay. And her father kind of pipes up and goes, "I um, I suppose I owe you all an apology." Kind of looks down at his feet. I don't want to interrupt your friend over there. It seems like he's having a touching moment. Um, uh, I was under the impression you were all frauds. Um, after your your displays on the boat there, um, I, I think maybe perhaps uh, you didn't know what was going on in the in the bone orchard. So. Um, Paladin, if you if you don't mind, it was your idea to uh, to take us to Dragon Tail. Um, what now? Um, well, I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, um, I believe since we're in the largest city, as I sneeze, um, <laughs> I believe <laughs> I believe. Uh, you. Uh, um, <laughs> thank you, Evandra. Um, I- uh, because we're in a larger city, there should be lots of um, uh, safe places to stay for now until you can find yourself um, an escort to Dragon Tail or, or possibly some faster uh, travel. You could probably find a caravan or um, uh, there, there might be merchants that are going there. Um, 
that would be my uh, best guess. And if if you need some monetary compensation, I'm I'm sure I can help you. Uh, he kind of looks at you and he kind of jiggles a, a small pouch. He goes, "It's fine." Um, as I'm sure you kind of gathered, uh, even though Ashborn didn't use a currency system, we still managed to get ourselves some coin. In this case, um, yeah, yes, of course. Um, you could probably stick around with us, but I, I, I do believe we're going to a bit of a, a rougher part of the city. Um, mm. I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's a large main tavern somewhere. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll meet up. We can <laughs> Several. <send> a... <laughs> <laughs> well, we could probably send, send a message if, uh, if you happen to get into trouble of any kind. Um, okay. Um, do any of you know which way? Uh, yeah. Uh, and at this point, Evandra kind of pipes up. Zane knows he's from here. I saw that. And she kind of hops off towards Zane and Arthur. Um, you might want... Jeez, oh, oh what was that? You kind of cut out a little bit there for me, oh, Mo. I was going to say, uh, j just give them a minute. She's already gone at this point. So, uh, Zane, as you're having this conversation uh, with Arthur, um, mm -hmm. suddenly you feel a little tug at your shirt. Um you know, you're still holding Orville, um, who's been, during, while you were hugging Arthur, was comically squished between you. And he's looking a little kind of like cross-eyed and just <coughs> like a deflated uh, airbag. As this is a very old dog. And Evandra kind of looks at you and looks at the puppy and goes, oh, wow, he's really old. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess he is. Arthur kind of looks down and goes, uh, who, who's, who's this? She kind of looks at him and goes, Hi, I'm Evandra. My daddy says I'm special, and I'm going to be queen someday. Don't touch her. Arthur kind of <laughs> peers back and kind of now for the first time having been, you know, tunnel visioned on his, his son, who he thought was dead, looks back and sees this the motley crew kind of standing back there of uh, two humans, uh, half orc, a goliath, and an and an elf. Yeah. Okay. He kind of squats Queer. down. Queer and I Squat. don't think you should tell people not to touch children. I'm pretty sure <coughs> everyone knows that. <coughs> tell that to her. She's the one running around trying to touch things. Arthur kind of squats down and goes, Well, it's very nice to meet you, Evandra. What makes you think you're going to be queen someday? And she kind of goes, Oh, I saw it in my visions. He goes, Oh. So you're going to be queen of Queen of Dragon Tail. She goes, "Oh no, not the Queen of Dragon Tail. The Queen of something much, much worse." And, and at this point, Arthur kind of goes, "Uh, like that face of doy. Like, what the fuck did you just say?" And Evandra puts out her hand. Um, I assume there's about to be a pizza delivered. Yeah. Evandra puts out her hand, and Arthur shakes her hand. What are the rest of you That's doing? Me. That's for me. What are the rest okay. of you doing? Um, Shaking my head. We all overheard what she said, right? You all heard what she said, yes. I was under the impression that. <laughs> okay, there's the dog. Let's take a pause. Yep. <laughs> These dogs have paws. <laughs> I hate you. Bark. I do apologize to everybody on stream. Some, there was an IRL D and D session today, and uh, Zane got home late, so food is necessary. The pickle. Pepper. Orville, Orville, stop, Orville. Orville, yes, Orville is barking. That's right. <laughs> really good foley work. Yeah, except, except, just so everyone's aware, Orville cannot bark. Orville's like a wheeze, like a <laughs> type thing. Like the books just... or things teleport. <laughs> No, that's a that's a bit different. And things teleporting are more of a. There's only so much foley you can do with your mouth, John. <laughs> well, if you have a mindset, I'm gonna mute if that. you have a limited yeah. mindset like that, Tanner, <laughs> I'll let you know once the barking stops. You can probably still hear it through mine. Through yours, but not as loud. Through hers, is okay. very loud. Yes, I'm aware. <clears throat> Hey John, you're the uh, you're the host for this server, right? Yep. Are you not? 
Eh, never mind. It's already pretty much passed. Never mind. Where are they? Um, All right. Pizza is gotten. Dog has finally stopped barking. Unmuting. Yep. She's just going to take a second to... In the YouTube video, this will be edited out. <laughs> the oh, there goes the D20. It's pa the power of taking shit away. Oh, excuse me. Who let the dragon in? Me! Hello. <laughs> Sounds of preparation. I know, I'm trying. Give me a second. <laughs> I know the only person I can see in chat other than us is the Pickle Peddler, so say hello. 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 Damn. I know who that is. Is that Hayes? Yes, it is. Hi, Hayes. <laughs> oh, the stream went iffy. Oh, there we go. Back for me. All right, I'm good. <laughs> okay, Corey, <laughs> don't break funny. my concentration like that. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, is it in random fun? No. No. No, no it's not. I'll, well, I'll show it to you later. <laughs> okay, as I was saying, Arthur kind of, kind of squats down, and this conversation happens, and Evandra has said, you know, I'm going to be the queen of something much worse. And he kind of said, uh, okay. And he goes, well, it's it's very nice to meet you. And he puts out his hand. And Evandra uh -oh. grabs his hand and shakes it. I wouldn't. Uh... And she kind of slows down her shaking. She pulls her hand back. And she looks at Zane. And she looks at Arthur and goes, she wants to talk to you. Both of you. Like, real spooky. Like children of the corn. And Arthur's like, oh, okay. Um, I'll I'll keep that in mind and stands back up and he's like, okay. Um, I have a job to do, but uh, Zane, we have to we have to go talk to your mother. Um, um if you would allow my uh, my. Uh group Compared to groups? join us he kind of looks over your shoulder once again at the motley crew and kind of i uh i i suppose but um they uh we don't really have a lot of lot of room zane they can't they can't stay with us that's fine uh, that's fine okay we're only in town for a little bit of business Oh, you have some, you have, he all of a sudden goes to dad voice, he goes, you have some serious explaining to do, young man. Zane's face is white again. Okay, um, do you excuse me? And he kind Zane, of I... trots past you, Zane. He, he kind of nods to you, uh, to the group, and heads over to the dock master to have a discussion. I, I'm all for a family reunion, um, but... I, th I thought you said we shouldn't be here at night, so. No, uh, we certainly should not be. Uh, although, uh, according to you, we are going to the uh, the dark side of town, so. Uh, yeah, there's no possible fun. way you can convince me to go with you. Or we could so just find a quiet place to open the box, have it explode, and then see what's inside. Uh, there are two, there, there are a couple different options. We could take it to this lovely little shop in this part of town, I suppose. Um, and we could do Terrible the thing idea. that we want to do. Or we could, um, open it and be bastards. And um, probably dead. It just dropped. Or we could, um, 
Maybe we could pass the buck on to somebody else if we're so uh, against it. Or we could deliver it. That's we unfortunately have taken claim to delivering it, so if anything goes wrong... You two are I bet taking that claim. No. Uh, well, no, I'm sure we can make a side uh, a side step with the, without the rest of the group. But he knows who they are, so um, I think we're all wrapped up in this together. Let's turn this in. We'll possibly earn some coin. And let's be honest, hmm. we've Gave seen some, some shit. Or we could go to my parents' house for tea. That sounds a little safer. Oh, well, we could do both. You've never you always said this... tea. Place they said this place isn't open during the day, so I guess we gotta wait anyways. And so at this point, um, Arthur kind of comes back and he's holding um, uh, kind of a smaller package. It looks like it's been kind of uh, shambled together with um, uh, like one by sixes. It's like a really uh, small crate, about eight inches square. He's kind of holding it, and there's a big uh, piece of parchment um, that's uh, affixed on top with nails. Um, and it says, uh, Dean Latimer, do not lose. Um, it's very apparent to all of you. And he's Arthur's holding it very carefully. He kind of walks over. Um, hi, um, my name is Arthur Sinedius. I'm the, uh, the treasurer at the College of Ioun here in Redwater. Um, I believe I'm led to believe that you have been traveling with my son. They want to go to the remains. Uh, they, yeah, you, uh, mm, kind of puts the box. He goes, so um, uh, as I can, um, as I can tell you, uh, none of you are really uh, from here. Looks at you, Zaz, and he kind of raises an eyebrow. He goes, um, the remains is kind of where uh, dangerous folk go. Um, warriors, um, thieves, uh, not really the type for, uh, I'm assuming, uh, five, uh, very well adjusted I'm young, chuckling at this point. young men. He, he's looking at you chuckling and he's realizing the absurdity of what he's saying. And so, um, That's pretty comforting. Uh, at Better this than my childhood, uh, that's, uh, that's great. Um, at this point, if you, you four wouldn't mind, I, uh, I, I, I'd like a moment with my, my son. I have, uh, he looks at the flowers. He goes, I have, um, uh, another errand to run. That's, uh, a little personal. Um, um before, uh, uh, before we let you go, um, because of course we're going to, um, uh, where uh, where can we meet you? Oh, I'm I'm sure um, I'm sure we can receive word from our compatriot, but um, uh, where, uh, is there a direction? Well, we there uh, kind of looks to you, Zane. Goes, are they are uh, are they all coming back? Um, you could give them the address of the house, and we could meet them there. Uh, um. Uh, I uh. I'd much prefer your mother's a little busy with an order right now. Um, perhaps we should just tell them to sit in the park. Sure. Okay. Um, if you head due west of here uh, and you follow uh, the shoreline, um, eventually uh, kind of looks around. Eventually the area is going to get a little less, <clears throat> excuse my language, shitty. Um, if you turn in there um, and just ask for uh, th uh, the park in the burrows, um, there's kind of a, a wide open green area. Uh, it's fairly nice. Uh, we can meet you there. We won't be too long. We'll be uh, shortly behind you, if that's okay. Uh, any queer? Zaz? Mo? Yeah? Work for you? Yeah. Works for me? Works for me. It's fine. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, I, I do I do apologize. Um, no, I'm just a little uh, caught off guard by everything. Um, yeah. Your son killed a spider demon. Uh, he he did what? Sorry. Well, it was sort of like a man 
It's Jules with the spider. Quirin. Okay, we're going now. Uh, <sighs> kind of. Uh, you guys leave, and Arthur, kind of <laughs> wide. <laughs> 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 Arthur kind of turns to you, Zane, and goes, "We'll go visit your sister, and then I think we have a little bit of a talk on the way home." I'm not staying. We'll talk about that. Okay, we, we go. <laughs> okay. So, Zane, um, player, I assume you know where we're going. Yep. Okay. Walking through uh, the alleys of Old Town, um, you're led to a place by Arthur that you yourself uh, never visited, uh, but you know what happened here. Um, you come to a, uh, a back alley just near a, a kind of a shadier bookstore known for dealing in some of the uh, more obscure and darker side of the arcane. And he heads into the side alley and there is a, uh, a small holy symbol to Ayun um, labeled Janine Sinedius, which he places the flowers down and kind of hangs his head for a moment. Zane kind of, doesn't say anything. He's he's in like he's in a whole different world. He's gone. Uh -huh. Kind of turns to you and goes, "You know, I lost two children in one week, right?" And Zane just swallows hard. Kind of looks down. I guess the positive side is I have one back. Zane sighs heavily. Like, not like annoyed, annoyed, yeah. but understanding. Yes. All right, come on. I want to, I want to hear about this spider demon because last time I talked to you, you were still very much convinced of being an alchemist. And you begin your walk back to the burrows. So, while this is happening, the rest of you. Walking along the docks of Redwater. You can very clearly see that all of the storefronts and um, open-air businesses and markets in front um, are very... What's the word I'm looking for? Seedy. Uh, there's people calling out to you. Ah, fra hey, hey, do you, you want to buy a watch? A gold watch, just for you. Uh, hey, any need you? Anything you need? Anything? I've got women. I got it. all fading out. The one thing, though, that the four of you do here that stands out above the rest and makes you all turn is a loud, ah! sort of like a seagull but much louder. Turning around, you see up in the air four large winged figures. Who would like to make a perception check? I will. Yeah. yeah. Or can we all? You can all make a perception check if you ah, like. Okay. Critical <laughs> fail! Queer, and you look back, and there's just sun. You're like, oh, god damn it. You know, just... <laughs> You're ruining my good mood. <laughs> <laughs> 16. 17. Zaz, are you rolling as well? Nope. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Zaz, you're, at this point, you're just used to bird sounds. Um... <laughs> Alastor and Mo, looking up, you see for the four winged figures. And Alastor, this is a very similar question um, in your mind. <laughs> are those little birds pretty close up for those big birds really far away? Uh, Not and last as, time they were big birds. <laughs> and as you stand there and, and watch, 
it becomes very clear that these are big birds in a nosedive. And Mo, because the DC for this was 17, <laughs> the birds appear to be made of stone. Uh -oh. um, As the group of four splits, two head off over the Jade Basin and begin circling a ship heading out to sea. As the other two begin diving right down for you. If I could Stone get bird. the four of you oh. to roll for initiative, please. This is what happens when you split the party, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to get you... Oh, boy. Five. Twelve. Six. Good night. <laughs> Let me change the music here as well. They do travel in heads. Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is really pretty. All right, so. Like every time I play PUBG, I have a black screen. Oh, okay. I'm so let's do uh, um, initiative here while everyone's loading. Oh, those are not great numbers for me, though. Um, could I. Who has uh, 20 to 25? Nobody. Nobody? Okay. Um, 15 to 19? Nobody. Really? Yep. Really? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, god damn. Okay, what? 5 to 10? I have Six. a 10. Okay, Mo <laughs> has a 10. Alastor has a 12. Oh, Alastor has a 12? Oh, have a 12? Yep. Oh, yeah. He skipped a bracket. Yeah, just because I figured you guys were so low. Uh, and then a six from Zaz. And a five for me. Oh my god. Yeah. He was really blinded by the sun. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's say. Good way of doing it. Blinded All right. So I'm going to put you guys on the map. Put you there. You there. I'm going to let you guys arrange this before I drop Birdos in. The city people have just fleed. They heard, they're looking up, they're seeing these birds come down. They are hauling ass. Shops are being closed up. People are leaving their stalls. Where are you going? Perfect. Uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, All right. Man. So, top of the round. As the first Goliath hunter huh. swoops down, a reminder how fucking big they are. Oh. Yep. <laughs> they are gargantuan creatures. Jesus. Um. So... It is going to swoop down and is going to come right to you two and it's going to use multi-attack. So it's going to get two attacks with its talons and one with its beak. Talon attacks are against Mo and Zaz. The beak attack is going to be against, obviously, Quirin. So, first attack on Mo. Yeah, I'm going to stop using that dice because I can't read it. Um, is it that one? So it kind of comes down at you and kind of goes off balance a little bit as it tries to swipe at you. Misses horribly. And that's a five on Zaz. Uh, so that's a grand total of a 12 to hit. So obviously not. Mm. The beak attack on Quirin is another nat one. Beauty. Okay. Well, that fucking sucks. <laughs> Zane, you were approximately three rounds away. Okay. As you hear this in the distance and you know what's happening... For some strange reason, your feet take you off running. You hear Arthur in the back, Z Zane, as running back, you look behind you and you see Orville, his tiny little legs, <laughs> trying oh! to follow you as best as he can. No! <laughs> Alaster, yes. it is your turn. What would you like to do? Oh, actually, hold on. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, you're within 20 feet. Can you go ahead and make a constitution saving throw for me? Oh boy. Welcome to 4th edition's aura mechanic. Uh, con save? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Seven. Uh, 11. 11. So as, as this bird lands and makes the two attacks, you ready your weapon? And suddenly your muscles begin to feel stiff. As you look down, you start to see your legs begin to turn gray. 
Looking at this creature now, Alaster, it's different than the first one. The rocks themselves seem to have a purple light kind of flooding in from behind them. And this Goliath Hunter has one huge purple Cyclops eye in its head. It's looking down at you. Um, you are considered restrained, which means that attacks on you have advantage, as well as your movement is zero. Ah. Okay. Um, you can you will have to repeat the saving throw at the start of your next turn. If you fail that, you become petrified. Right. It is your turn. Uh, as my action, mm -hmm. I am going to pump <laughs> thirty hit points to heal myself to full. Okay. Uh, because I I'm a hurting unit. Uh, okay. Uh, that is my action. So. Right. As my bonus action, I'm going to cast. Uh, oh, nothing. I'm. I can't. I, nah, mm -mm. Do you want to hold an action or? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold an action for for a weapon attack. But if it if it comes within striking range. Within striking range. Uh, you do have a whip. Oh yeah. So just, um, just a reminder that would be within range for you. Okay. Um. So yeah, so uh, so I'm not sure if I'm able to use that for this. Why not? Have... Right. Okay. It's been a long day, boys. Yeah, no, it happens. Um. Come here, Malfia. Where are you? Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen barely hits. Oof. Okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Tanner made a thing. Uh, ten. Ten points of damage. All right. And like the last one, I'm going to try to avert my gaze as best as possible. Okay. Uh, next up is Mo. Mo, con saving throw, please. Uh, you might as well copy paste it. Hold up, I I forgot a part of that. Oops. Uh, oh shit! Uh, so it's actually t uh, twenty. Twenty-two. All right, I can mark that down. Um, Corey, I'm within ten feet of you. Yep. So you get a plus so four. I get a plus four. Okay, so that's that's a nice ten. That's a 26. 26. So you look over and Alaster is kind of confused as to why his feet won't move. And you feel this, a similar effect growing up from your feet into your legs. And you're able to flex your muscles and shake it off. However, it begins to creep back. We'll cover that later. It is your turn. What would you like to do? Okay. Um, not, not looking at the face. I'm going to attack it three times. If you're not looking at it, I'm going to ask you to make an attack roll with disadvantage because you're not facing it. Well, I was going to say I'm not looking at the... Alright. Just so you're aware. Uh, Zaz, you are on deck. Yep. Uh, trying to figure out how to roll this. That's what, six... We have to roll each attack separately, especially with yeah, being so. a disadvantage. So just roll two, uh, two d twenty plus your attack modifier three times in a row. Apparently, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, sure. First one hits. Do it again. We'll do all uh, the damage together. Okay. Um... Uh. Uh, 11 does not hit. So first one hits, second one misses. Oh, buddy. I'm sorry. It hits, but it's not the nat 20 that you fucking yeah, I, earned I... right there. All right. So the first and third one hit, which is the one that's not the Raven Queen's projection. So that's 2d8 plus the modifier on that times two. Times two. Yeah, so basically you'd be rolling 2d8. Yeah, 2d8. Plus 
two of the modifier, whatever the modifier on that damage is. So How if it's six, it'd be 12. Well, you just oh, double oh, okay. Just double yeah. Okay. Um... Yep. Oh. All right. 17 points of damage. A one and an eight. That's funny. Ooh. You guys are making quick work of this one. Shame there was four of them. Anything else from you, Mo? You still do have your movement. Mm. And uh, you've used your bonus action, but you still have your move. I'm going to stand if if your, your body blocking body blocking queer. Yeah. OK, I'll take the squishy one. That's very fair. Zaz, it is your turn. What are you doing? <clears throat> What's this thing made up again? Is it just like a bird or is it like a, I thought it was a stone bird. Uh, this one is it looks it, if you were remembering from the last time. It, it appeared to be a number of stones held together by magic. This one looks different, as I described previously. You can actually see the magic inside it holding it together. That's a pinkish purple, as well as it has one large cyclope, like cyclops-like eye mm. in its head that's glowing like dark purple. Okay. I'm going to move. I was there. So 5, 10, 15. You should make a con saving throw at the beginning of your turn, though. Okay. I do apologize. Just at the beginning, okay. and then we'll carry on. 14. 14 does not save. So at this point, you are considered restrained, and you feel your feet begin to get heavy. You'll be making that con save at the beginning of your next turn as well. Okay. I can still cast yeah. the spells and stuff though, right? Yep, you can still do shit. Yes. Cool. I'm going to cast uh, Blindness. Blindness? All right. Ooh. Is that a, a save for me? It's a con 14 save. Right, let me just quickly read this. Con 14. That's a nat 20. Yeah. So it kind of looks, and as its eye begins to blacken, it kind of shakes, and you see the black energy kind of fly off of it, almost as if it was a black mold growing over its eyes. Anything else you'd like to do there, Zaz? Mm, nope. All right. At this point, so focused on the first one, you hear a large, ah! as the second one lands on top of a building nearby this one kind of flaps its arms out and a laster it looks directly at you and its eye begins to glow i need you to make a dexterity saving throw please oh boy disadvantage because you're restrained mm, i see okay uh, uh so oh, oh. six uh, let me just roll the damage on this. Uh, 1d10. 2d10. Oh, boy, this ain't good. Uh, 3d10. There we are. Um, I need you to go ahead and take 10 points of force damage. Okay. However, once it shoots this beam and hits you, you notice that the, the lustrous dark purple in its eyes kind of becomes lighter and fades. All right. That is the <laughs> Strix's turn. Uh, Quirin, you are up. Con saving throw, please. Yep. You're within 10 feet of Corey, so you get the plus. You get plus, the plus four. Six. Plus four. Yep. So does that count as a turn? Yep. Uh, round, Michelle. Oh, round. Yeah, because uh. that counts around. Uh, a Quirin ending his turn will be one round. Okay, also Spoolie? Yes, my apologies. Um, seven. So, again, you stand there and you feel your feet become heavy. You are considered restrained. You have no movement. What would you like to do? All right. I'm going to cast Sacred Weapon. Spiritual Weapon, Spiritual you mean? Weapon every time. At level two, okay. right next to the thing. All right. Change to... Right next to the thing, eh? Yep. Right there ish? Right or... there. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit it. Alright, go ahead and roll to hit. 21. 21 hits, go ahead and roll damage. Then. 10 points of damage. So, realizing that you can't move, you bring 
your your powers to the forefront and materializes as the spinning glaive next to it, which <laughs> digs in. This creature is made of stone. And you see some chunks fly off, but not as many. Zane, you hear the sound of a spiritual weapon digging into uh, stone, and you hear people screaming. At this point, people are running past you. You're still running as fast as you can. Looking behind you, not only now do you see Orville, but you see your dad holding his bag in front of him, almost like anime comically running like, ah, where are we going? We he's he's visibly out of breath at this point. Okay. Um, actually, at this point, uh, Zane, could you make a athletics check for me? Oh God, that's like my worst. Oh! <laughs> a zero? That can crit fail of the night. Zane oh. eats shit. Zane's looking back. He's not paying attention. He hits the boards on the board, walk the wrong way. <laughs> kind of comes to a roll. <laughs> Looks down. He brushes off his knees. And Orville kind of hops up on your laps. <laughs> <laughs> like panting heavily as an old dog running would. You get back up. You continue on. I have just added about half a half a round to your run. <laughs> All right, top of the round, Stone Strix. Stone Strix is going to take off actually into the air and fly. As you guys go to maybe take a swing, it takes off so quick that you kind of get the feeling that opportunity attacks or reactions against this thing might be difficult if it involves flying. It's going to go behind you all, kind of in like almost a hop, and is going to take uh, uh, two talent attacks against you and a beak attack against, uh, sorry, two talent attacks against Quirin and one beak attack against the Laster. Uh, sorry, no, this is gonna hurt. Okay, the neither of the talent attacks land because these dice are just Fuck it up tonight. Big and the beak attack also does not hit. Ah, uh, because that's a natural three. Uh, so as it kind of hops over and turns, it goes whoo, whoo, and misses everything. That is that Strix's turn. Uh, Goliath Hunter. Um, Alaster, con saving throw. Yes. Crit. There you go. So as you you see it jump behind you and it goes to make its attack. You're able to move your legs and use your fairly impressive strength to shake off the feeling of being petrified. You have your turn. The ah. feeling of the restrained is uh, ended. Okay. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, channel divinity. Okay. Of, uh... Um, vow of enmity. Essentially, until it's dead, I get uh, um, my hat has to be within ten feet. Uh, until it's dead, I get uh, at, um, advantage on the facts. All right. Okay. That's sure that's happening. So yep. I'm going to attack twice with yep. my great sword. Gotcha. Twenty plus eight. So, uh, first... Uh, second one hits. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, that would be for the, the first one, because I have advantage. Oh, that's... Yes, yeah, that's correct. That one hits. Uh, both hit. Okay, nice. Yep. So, that... Um, oh my gosh. Uh, okay. Uh, 28 damage. Ooh. <laughs> so turning around and feeling the effects being shook off, you just unleash two massive strikes um, with your greatsword. As stone begins chipping and flying away, however... You get the feeling that with this particular sword, you couldn't quite cut as deep as you'd like. Mm. 
Anything else from you, Laster? Uh, just going to sidestep to be closer to uh, to my main man, Quirin. All right. Next up is Mo. Mo, you succeeded the saving throw last round, so you are safe yeah. from making it again right now. What would you like to do? Um, move in. And okay. I'm just gonna make three attacks. All right. Go ahead. Swing. 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 Um, the first two hit. Okay. Just barely, though. I think that should... Yeah. Ooh, that working? does work. Interesting. Yeah. So 16 points of damage. So yep. Mo stepping in next next to uh, Alaster. You take two big swipes. You do a, a fair amount of damage, but it feels like the second strike hits a little bit harder than the first. Because that that's one of those weapons is magical. Um, let me do a little bit of quick math. Math here. All right. Uh, all right. Anything else from you, Mo? Uh, uh, that's it. That's it? All right, Zaz, con saving throw for me, please. Yep. Eighteen. Eighteen. So, again, feeling your feet get heavy, you're able to shake it off, um, much like a beloved uh, family channel show starring Zendaya and Bella Thorne. The f <laughs> Sorry. The effect is finished. You are no longer restrained. What would you like to do? <clears throat> um. Let's see. I'm going to. Oof. Mm, yeah. I'm going to call some lightning. All right. So is that a save from me? Uh, yeah, it'd be a uh, dex 14. Oh, it fails. Hurrah. Molly. Yeah, this is on uh, the guy closest to us. Yes, I, I kind of assumed. Hmm. So as clouds begin to slowly coalesce above and a strike of lightning comes down, uh, this bird doesn't react at all. And as it kind of looks at you and turns its head, you get the feeling that this bird was created with the last fight in mind. Hmm. Hmm. If anyone's played Arkham City and did the Mr. Freeze fight, that's what's happening right now. Anything else from you, Zaz? Uh, I'm gonna move. Can I like get in right there? Uh, yeah. I, it's a it's a bird. So I'm gonna say that you're right now. You're like directly underneath its plumage, if you can call it plumage. Uh, actually, sorry. Oh crap! I can't really get my guy right there. What the fuck? Grab him. Thank you. I'm actually you're gonna go on this side. I'm gonna cover your ass. Gotcha. Cover his ass. All right. Now the other Strix's turn. As it's going to come down right about here, and it's going to take a bunch of attacks at you. There's Zazmataz. Zazreno. Uh, it's going to take uh, both its talent attacks and its, its beak attack at you. Miss. Okay. Miss. What the fuck? Oh, that hits, right? Uh, 20. 21. Nope. Kidding. Yeah, I know you are. All right. So where's my D8s? There they are. So you are going to go ahead and take um, 10 points of piercing damage. And that's going to end that particular Birdo's turn. Quirin, you are up. All right. Just in case, I am going to pop false life on myself. 
Uh, uh you, I need you to make a con oh, save. Oh, that's right. Fuck, the con save. Shit. Yes. Plus four. four. Yep. Wow. 18. Ooh. Very lucky. Could I get you to make a second con saving throw, please? Oop. Oop. Nine. So as you shake off the first effect, the appearance of a second one so close to you, you feel the effect dissipate. Oh, and all of a sudden it comes back immediately. You're still considered restrained, but you did not suffer the, you're immune to the effects of one, but not the other. Yep. Okay. It is uh, your turn. Casting false life at third level. Okay. From D4 plus 14. <laughs> Holy shit. Some juicy hit points. What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> all right. That puts my total up to 42. All right. And then I am going to move my spiritual weapon. And attack the Goliath Hunter. All right. Go ahead and make an attack. Uh, Zane, be aware. You're coming into this. Critical. Okay. Oh, man. So yes, as, Daddy. As, as, the, as the second Goliath Hunter uh, makes its attacks against Zaz, who skillfully avoids it, you pump some extra life into yourself and it looks at you and is so focused on you, Quirin, that it doesn't see the zip zop zoobity bop giant spinning top coming right towards it to do 15 points of damage. Jeez. Wow. All right. At this point, the rest of you, what you see is you see the heads turn from both of them almost simultaneously as Zane. You now run into the battlefield. Could I get you to roll for initiative, please? And I will put you in order. Okay. Oh, what's my bonus again? Be your dex modifier. Yeah. 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 That's really oh! Actually, that works out perfectly. Zane, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Okay, so... Obviously, without saying anything, I kind of just jump in, and yep. I would like to um, try and cast Witch Bolt on... Uh, actually, no, I can't. I'm over here. Yeah, I was going to say you're a little bit out of I range. I got 30 feet of movement, right? Uh, yes. All right, I'd like to move this close and throw an Eldritch Blast at the uh, second Goliath Hunter. Okay, so make uh, uh, two Eldritch Blast attacks. Oh, one, and I'd like to beats. have my... Um, I'd like to have out. my staff out, yeah. Yep. All right. So that's a is plus that really six. Is that appropriate in town? It is, especially here. Plus six? Uh, yeah, it's a plus six, because it's your charisma modifier plus the, uh, the plus two from the rod of the pack keeper. Okay, that's one roll. <sighs> Doesn't hit the first time. Okay. That, that must hits. have been a critical hit. That one Does hits. Does double damage? It does, so you're gonna roll, it's just the dice though, so you roll 2d10 plus six. Okay. Giggity. Seventeen with a cantrip. God damn it. Half, technically half the cantrip. Yeah, half of the cantrip, that's right. So Zane running in, Orville still behind you and your dad disappearing into the crowd. You run in, just poof, poof, a little winded from your run. The first one goes wide, but the second one hits it square in the eyes. It turns almost as if it sensed your presence um, in particular. Uh, that fucking hurt. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do, Zane? Stop for breath. Okay. It is now the first Strix's turn, which is going to make a Talon attack at Mo, a Talon attack at Quirin. Uh, actually, no, it's going to make a talent attack at Alaster and Mo. Oh, that's cocked. Oh, not anymore. Uh, does a 19 hit Mo? Yes. Okay, does a 14 hit Alaster? Uh, no. Okay, that's what I kind of figured. Um, 1d6, 2d6, 3d6, 4. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, so, Mo, I'm going to have you take 24 points of slashing damage. Oof. Hmm. Um, and then it's going to make a Astral Gift attack at you, Quirin. I need you to make a dex saving throw. Disadvantage because you're restrained. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Yes. 
but you still get the plus four from being so close to yep. a last turn. That was Dex. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a no bueno. 14. <sighs> so almost as it digs its talons into the ground, it looks at you point blank, Quirin, and you're going to go ahead and take um, 13 points of fierce damage directly to the face. Fierce damage. Fierce Force. damage right there. Force damage. <laughs> you <laughs> all right alaster you are up what would you like to do uh, i need you actually alaster i need you to make a uh, con saving throw from the second uh, goliath hunter okay Ooh, 11. Ooh. Uh, once again you feel your feet begin to get heavy and this time the graying and the, the, the feeling of your legs turning to stone is moving closer and closer to your hips. You are considered restrained. Okay. It's your turn. Um, what would you like to do? I'm going to continue to attack the... Uh... Oh, boy. I guess we do it this way. Uh... Uh... Okay. So, uh, we have 18, 16, plus 8. So, I think they hit. Yeah, they hit. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah. Twenty-nine damage. Ooh. So, so at this point, and I can't really move. Um, at this point, yeah. you see stones begin to fall off, and you see uh, the actual energy holding it together. The Goliath Hunter begins to panic. It takes off into the air and regains its astral gift on the Reese charge, which is going to make an uh, attack against you, Alaster, and you should make a Dex saving throw with disadvantage. Okay. This is now considered bloodied. Uh, oh, oh, five. Not one. So you are going to go ahead and take uh, 13 points of force damage. No. Oh. As the this hunter is now in the air, uh, just kind of hovering. It's looking like it's ready to flee. It is still your turn, Alaster. Um, I I have a bonus action, I do believe. I do believe. Um, now I do have two weapon fighting. That means I can make an attack with my whip, right? Uh, it means you can have a weapon in each hand, and you have a great sword. Uh, no. oh, okay. Um, unfortunately, I can't do anything. So. All right. That can. ends your turn. Uh, Mo, I need a con saving throw. Okay. This isn't a poison thing, because I'm immune. No, it is not. Okay, just... Uh... This is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 17. 17 saves. So once again, you constitution boy, you feel this. Your the effects take uh, root in your feet, and you shake it right off. It is your turn. What would you like to do? Number one is out of my range, correct? Uh, it's still kind of hovering, but it looks like it's about to take, like, take off any second. Can I reach it? Yep. It's about five feet off the ground. You can reach it. Yeah, fuck. Well. Oh! Absolutely. Nothing hits. So as Garbage. you go swing and swing and swing, it just keeps kind of moving up each time to dodge your attacks. Anything else? Bow my head in shame. Okay. Uh, Zaz, you are up. Uh, can I get a con saving throw for you, please? 19. 19 succeeds, so you are uh, now immune to the effects from both. Cool. Alright, uh, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Goliath Hunter one's trying to fly away, right? It looks like it's about to. I'm going... Wait, it's about to? Isn't it, it looks, off the air? Or it's, it's, it's in the air? It's in the air, about five feet, and it's kind of surveying the situation, realizing it's in a losing position. It looks like it's thinking about heading out. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna move. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna use. Yeah, I'll do my wild shape. Get the spores out. All right. Let me make a mark of that on my thing here. And that's within what? Ten feet. Ten feet. All right. Anything else? Uh, it takes my action. I can't do much else. That, that's gonna be it. All right. Other stone tricks. Let me check the recharge. Oh shit. Okay. So at this point, Zane, the second one slowly turns, looks right at you, and you see its its kind of dull pur purple eye flare up, and a beam of energy just comes straight out of its cyclops eye. I scry with my one cyclops eye. <laughs> that just popped back <laughs> in my head. Shoots directly at you, Zane. I need a dexterity saving throw from you, please. Yes. Oh, there we go. 17 succeeds. Can I get you to make, Zane, a dexterity saving throw with a negative three, though? Why? Just trust me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> oh, I'm a fucking, I'm so sorry. Are you evil? Oh no, please so tell me as, you're not doing what I think you're doing. As you dodge out of the way, you hear no. behind you, <laughs> no! As looking behind you, Orville is blasted. No! Full on. And lies lifeless on the ground. Oh my god, stop! Oh. stop He's still, god, as far god. as you can tell. Actually, you know what? Make a, make a quick medicine check for me. Oh my god, Tanner, what is wrong with you? <laughs> John's laughing. Okay, I knew what was going to happen. 18. Uh, you can tell he's still breathing. Labored, but he's still breathing. Oh my fucking lord, I hate this game. <laughs> I love this uh, game. Behind, as this happens, you hear Arthur in the background go, Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Just like, completely in shock of what he's currently witnessing. Um, still holding his pouch, he sees his son get shot at by a giant bird with magic, which it dodges and then hits his dog. Um, he's not having a good day. <laughs> um, Quirin, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Sorry, I'm still thinking of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he just got his son back and he might lose him. Okay. Okay. Uh, looking at the two next to me, are they a little bloody? Um, as much as, so the one, uh, the first one. That I'm talking about last room, though. I don't know. On a scale of zero to your health, how bloody do you look? 35. <laughs> so you're fine. On a scale of zero to 61, I'm a 13. Oh, <laughs> you're very bloody. Yeah. This is yeah. a little meta. <laughs> that, I, I will allow that. Yeah, just funny. because for uh, going forward. Just say you're either bloodied or severely wounded. Okay. We'll, we'll say it that way. That's yeah. just a good way to do it. All right, so I'm going to pump a level two healing word into Mo. Okay. For 11 health. Nice. And then Goliath Hunter 2, I'm going to take a swipe at. All right, with uh, spiritual weapon, I assume? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Just... 25. Yeah, 25 hits. I'm just imagining you think because you're able to punch your mother that somehow now you're strong. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> he threw up from that. He was terrified. 10 he points. Did. 10 points of damage. All right. That that particular one, as, as the blade digs into it, that one looks a little bit healthier than the other one. Oh, one sec here. Oh, fuck. I just got a Facebook message calling me a cold bastard. That's perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes! Uh, old co-worker. Uh, hello, by the way. Um, where was I? All right, yes, Quirin. That's it. Anything else from you? Uh, I did not do the Constitution saving throw. That is correct. I thought you already succeeded. Yeah. On the one, not the other. And that's All the right, second fail so on that one. With that, Quirin, the rest of you watch in horror... Is Quirin has turned to stone, oh. like completely, and is is considered petrified. Um, because I forgot, I'll let that turn go through. That should have been at the yeah, start of the yeah, turn. I forgot as well. 
I'll let that pass. So Zane, as you turn back around, you just turn around in time to see the spiritual weapon hit, and suddenly there's a beautiful statue of Quirin. He's even grayer than normal. Ah, uh, he's very gray. He's got a stern look on his face and looks like he's about to give a backhand. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Zane, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, I would like to th throw... Are we? Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure. I actually just want to throw another Eldritch Blast. Okay. Um, plus six. Okay, here's my first attack. Does not hit. There's my second. Second one does hit. Go ahead and roll your 1d10 plus six for that. Eight points of damage. All right. That's not that great. Zane, mm? can I get you to roll a d20, please? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a death saving throw. <laughs> You're good. You're he good. Sees. That's one success. <laughs> you, listening to you whimper fuels me. <laughs> Your tears hydrate me. <laughs> All right. It's the first stone Strix's turn. Let me roll to make sure he doesn't get his gaze back. He doesn't. That's perfectly fine. He's going to make two Talon attacks at um, Alaster and one Beak attack at Mo. Uh, yikes. Uh, 19. And uh, 19 hits, a 12 does not Mo, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, and then 17, does that hit you, Alaster? Yes. Okay, so tell an attack on Mo. He's big, he's big square boys out here. Meaty claws. Um, big meaty claws, big stone claws, actually. Um, that is 17 points of damage to you, Mo. And then to Alaster, uh, it didn't hit you, correct, Alaster, or it did? It did. It did. Okay, so that's uh, uh, math. Very basic math. I'm an idiot. 12 points of uh, damage. Um, and with that, this one actually is going to kind of look, see that its target is neutralized, and is going to fly away. Cutting its losses. Alaster, you are up. What would you like to do? Um, well, I suppose we're going to, uh, I have to make a con save, don't I? You succeed. No, no, you, you failed. That's correct. Thank you. There's a lot going on. Come on, come on. Damn. Damn, yeah. 23. Yes. Spores. Wasn't the, the Griffin guy's turn? Yeah, it would have been the group of spores. What was, what's the saving throw? Uh, 16, correct? It rolled in. It just rolled in that nineteen. How much damage does it do? Just so I'm aware. The spores. It's one. Uh, one d six. One d six. Okay. Good to know. Um, yeah, Alaster, you succeed. Uh, looking beside you, there's a lovely statue of Quirin. Oh god, I'll have to deal with that later. Um, I okay. okay. Um, so, move in this way, and I, uh, I suppose I can just make two attacks, that's, that's all, all right. I can do. I see our bot has decided to take a nap. Dramatic ah! pause. Oh, there we go. A lot. <laughs> yeah, that hits. Okay, um... Both of those hit. Yep. Twenty six damage. Damn, son. Could have been. All right. So it it could have been, but it wasn't. So as you take your two swipes, you start seeing stones fly off of this thing. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Alaster? Um. I'm staying planted. All right. Uh, Mochacho, you are up. What would you like to do? I'm suddenly Mexican. 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> Suddenly Mexican. The name of the first album from the Devil's Advocates. <laughs> a sombrero appears on Mo's head. I, th I thought the first album was bloodied and beaten. <laughs> El Raven Queen. Um, <laughs> El Raven Queen. El Raven Okay. Yes, yes, and yes. All hit. All right. So... <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, all right. It's starting to look pretty hurt. As you take swipe, 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 the Raven Queen's projection still sinking in a little bit harder than the other um, projected axe. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Mo? That's it. All right. Uh, Zaz, you are up. Uh, stay where I'm at. Just gotcha. Moonbeam him. Fuck! All right, yeah. Let me just change this to a second. Right about there, I'm assuming? Uh, oh. yeah. One sec it. here. Let me do this here. Um, a range, bring to front. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> All right, and then it's a save of dex, or is it a con save for this one? Constitution 14. Con 14. That's a natural 18. Oh. It still takes half damage, correct? Yep. <sighs> <laughs> it looks inconvenienced by the, oh. by the bright light. It's the Strix's turn. I assume you're done, Zaz. Yep. Um, that's a nat three on the saving throw, though, so you do get that damage. For which one? Spores. Okay. I'm just doing these one at a time. And then, what's the save 14 you said? Yep. Fuck. 13. Yep, that succeeds, too. Damn. The residual damage off of you. I'm a pain in my ass. That dot damage. Holy fuck! All right. Um. Damn. So, even though the first moonbeam doesn't quite hit, it kind of looks up and <clears throat> right in the eye. Um. Owie. As spores <clears throat> go off in its mist. Um. It's looking real hurt. And it's actually. Um, let me think here. Looking over at Quirin, it's going to turn its attention to Zane <laughs> and is going to make another astral gift attack. That's the same attack, Zane, that hit Orville the first time. Oh, no. As the beam's coming towards you, do you want to make the dexterity saving throw? What do you mean, do I want to? Are you moving? Because if this beam hits Orville, that's too Am I in his way? You are blocking it right now. Okay, block the shit of it. Okay, you're... Just be aware that you're willingly taking this. Yep. Okay. I need you to go ahead and take 16 points of force damage. Okay. As the beam just hits you from the back as you're protecting your dog with your body. His breathing is labored, but it's getting better. Quirin. Yep. Due to the nature of this petrification, you've already failed a death save. Yep. Roll. No. Yep. If this is in that one, he oh. dies. What? <sighs> yeah. Let's get it, boys. All right, so you got one success and one failure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone should heal him. <laughs> Zane, I, it is your. I have nothing. Do you not have lay on hands? I used I it all myself. Sit on himself. Or I would be dead. <laughs> oh no. Uh... This is gonna be good. Oh Jesus Christ! All right. Wait. 
Is Zane, does he get uh, the plus four on his death saving throws because he's nope. beside that's, court? That's, no, it's, death not a, it's a death save, not a death saving throw. Oh. Zane, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, I would like to cast um, Scorching Ray at, uh, at the Goliath Hunter. All right. As Scorching Ray, if I recall. Well, let me just bring it back up here. So that's three spell attacks, correct? Um, when you cast a spell during a third a spell slot of third level or higher, you create one additional ray. So three. Uh, I three, don't think right? you have third level spells though. You only have second level. Yeah, spells. but I have. Three. Oh wait, no. You... Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, no, you have three, so you make three spell attacks because it's That's three. That's what I just said. Yeah, I thought you were saying your cat, your cast, you were casting at third level, which you do have third level spell slots. Actually, I apologize. I do. You do? Oh, I do too. Yeah. So I could cast that at third level. You could spell, cast. But I, you, you, I don't want to. All right. So just three rays of fire. So it's yes. yes. And it'd be um, plus uh, be plus six to the attack, actually. Yes, it would. That hits. Do it again. Do it two more times. That hits. Do it again. That one barely misses. So just angry at what this creature's done to your dog. Um, <laughs> go ahead and cast, uh, do your 4d6 fire damage. 4d6 plus 6? Or no, that's no, just Relder's just, Blast. just straight 4d6. Ugh, on that one. You know what? I'll, I, I'm going to say it. Zane, how do you want to do this? Because that's, that's, that's death on this thing. I just want to be screaming, like, pure fucking hatred at... Okay. And I just want to... Choom, choom, choom. Yeah. Just, yeah. All right. <laughs> As you hit the thing, um, stones begin to fly off as... Can, wait, can I make a comparison? Yes, you may. When Gandalf fought the Balrog... Okay. When Frodo screamed when they fell down the, uh... Okay, just, like, pure, unadulterated rage. Yes. Okay. With that, you watch as this Goliath Hunter crumbles. The fire seemed to actually surprisingly do maybe a little bit more than expected. Hmm. And we'll take him off. At this point, Zane, we're still in initiative order. I need you to break a death saving throw for Orville, please. <laughs> As you watch, even though you protected him, uh, his, uh, his breathing becomes more labored. Come on, Dad, do something about the dog. All right. So he has failed. You guys have a couple seconds to figure out what you are doing. Uh, I'm going to take the, uh, the healing potion out of my, uh, bag and, uh, pray to, uh, the Platinum Dragon, and then I'm going to try and pour it in Quirin's mouth. Quirin, what was the facial expression that you were making when you got petrified? Is your mouth open? Well, no, it's not. My I'm face try when and he heals Quirin and not my dog. In somewhere on that something. Is no... Uh... Okay, you know your what? I'm going. Yeah, your nose and throat. <laughs> okay. Um, Alaster, for this, I need you to just roll a percentile dice. Oh, God. It shouldn't go down because his mouth was closed. 57. Yeah. Yep. It was above. It was It was a 50 50 chance. And he oh. rolled above. So, Quirin, as, as you suddenly come back to life, you go. <laughs> as your nose is just. Filled with healing potion. <laughs> Zane. Yeah. What are you doing with Orville? I'm looking at the group, panicking. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to run over and try and assist the dog. Okay. What are you doing? Oh, uh, that's still a whole, that's still a whole round. We're not, well, I'm going to say we're out of initiative order. You can run oh, over to okay. him. 
Uh, I'm going to try and perform CPR, use a medicine check, um, to try and stabilize the dog via CPR, I suppose. <laughs> okay, uh, Zane, are you helping him? Helping him how how am so two okay doing CPR? <laughs> well, you guys, so you can either both make a medicine check, or one of you can make a me make a medicine check with advantage. Uh... Depends on who has what for medicine. You can make a medicine check with advantage if you'd like. Yeah, okay. It's about 12. So, uh, 14. I'm just praying to Platinum Dragon the whole time. And with that, Orville dies. No. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Orville begins breathing, his eyes open. Zane, he still looks very hurt, but he's alive. Quirin, you come too. Um, you're you're aware who what happened. Uh -huh. We're still in there. Um, but you're pretty stiff. Arthur comes running up, kind of leans over, uh, looks at you, Zane, and goes, "We have a very long conversation to have." After. Sorry, is Orville still or alive? Orville is, is yeah, he's clinging on. He's a stabilizer. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to take a moment and just lie on the ground. Let's look at the yeah. benchy. There's a the, pool of blood at my feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, you guys gosh. are hurt. Me and Quirin probably have about, have about the same amount of hit points right now. Uh, Quirin. Yep. Looking out over the bay. You see a ship, which is kicked off to full speed, hit, uh, hit, you know, just over the horizon, and there's two, two still of uh, large birds, circling above it like vultures. Yeah, she can deal with it herself. Ha! Oh my god! All right. Oh, gosh. Uh, we need to get inside. We need to go somewhere safe right now. It should be fun for now. The other ones are teasing my mother. Here, more. Is... And I'm gonna pop a first level ear wounds into him. Okay. Into Mo? Yep. Alright, go ahead and roll that. Eight. Oh. I'm up to 50. Alright. Arthur kind of slowly picks up Orville. Um, a very rough looking puppy right now. <laughs> kind of looks, looks at you, Zane, and just. Arthur goes, we've got about a 45-minute walk, but I think we should all get inside. Uh, yes, I, I, I believe we should. Okay. I just start heading in, heading in the direction. You know where you're going. Mm -hmm. We have the cart. Yeah, I you guys had the cart. You kind of dropped it once the, uh, the battle began. So you begin moving with your cart and Arthur. And you circle around the shore. People slowly are starting to come back out and see what destruction has happened. Um, see what, what mess was made, if anyone's dead, if any ships were destroyed. Slowly but surely over the next 45 minutes, people begin to go about their day. But you hear whisperings of, you know, hey, did you hear, you know, giant birds attacked? Why would giant birds attack? Must be something to do with those flock fuckers. And you hear this consistently as you're walking through. It's like, you know, the flock must have done this. All oh, those bastards in the flock. Oh, if this town be better without them. And slowly but surely, though, as you move through the city, the conversation goes from talking about how awful the flock is to talking about business, talking about goings on. And as you come to the docks, you notice that... Um, the actual shipping docks are much larger. They extend far out into the Jade Basin, and the ships are upwards of ten times the size of the Ashen Heart, loading on massive crates. Cutting through the docks, you see many well-to-do establishments. This music is so dark. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's perfectly fine, because we're headed for a break. Many well-to-do establishments, which slowly begins to give... Uh, give way to uh, grassy areas and 
townhouses and uh, small bungalows made of dark wood and uh, various forms of uh, uh, metal railings and shingles and slate. You're led across a large, open park to one particular townhouse that Zane will get to describe once we're back from the break. So, this is so I get something to eat. People can stretch their legs. We will be back. Well, so um, now we want pizza. Yes. Now I want pizza. <laughs> Guess what's on it, Tanner? What? Pineapple. <laughs> All right. So, as Arthur leads the group along with Zane very close behind, Zane, would you like to go ahead and describe your family home? Oh, I was never told about this. Uh, that's why I'm leaving it up to you. I'm a little okay. intimidated by the prospect. Describe the house. Uh, it's cozy? Question mark. Okay. Jeez, oh, Tanner, why did you put me up to this? <laughs> it's your house. It's... It's... I, I don't know, Tanner. Can you... All right. It's a, it's a small townhouse made of the same dark wood and uh, shale roof uh, that you see most of the others sharing. Um, there's two windows on either side. Um, a, a stoop, I guess would be the term, a number about four to five stairs upwards onto a cobblestone. Uh, landing with a wood door. Uh, it's almost gothic in its design, but not quite. Arthur kind of opens the door, still cradling Orville um, with one hand, and uh, kind of calls in and says, one sec here, uh, Janira, uh, we have, uh, whatever you're doing, you're going to want to sit down. You kind of hear a voice come from inside the house. She goes, uh, oh, okay. You kind of hear a chair pull and he kind of looks back and says, just, um, understand this is going to be, looks to you, Zane, difficult. And he opens the door and you walk in. Uh, walking into the home, it's obviously a home of, uh, what you describe as intellectuals. Uh, there's lots of, uh, uh, bookshelves and uh, trinkets from other parts of the world, um, rugs. It's very um, pseudo ornate. There's a lot of uh, culture here, if you will. Uh, walking in, there's a there's a hallway with a staircase going upstairs, and at the end of the hall, you see um, quite a large kitchen. And Arthur kind of walks to the end of the hall, walks in the kitchen, and kind of goes. Um, so, uh, you hear Janira, the other voice, go, oh my god, what happened? And she, you know, you see, um, a, a blue tiefling kind of reach out and grab Orville and begins to cradle him, and she goes, oh, is he gonna be okay? And Arthur says, yeah, but you're gonna need to sit back down. Sorry. Uh, um... Would you would you mind would you mind coming in? Zane. We all push Zane forward. Zane walks in. Oh god. <clears throat> and there you see your mother uh sitting at the, the kitchen table. Um she's got uh, an apron on that's covered in flour and and other uh baking things. Um cradling Orville, she kind of looks up and she almost drops the dog, which lets out a <laughs> Like a, a panicked, a panicked bark, and she quickly catches, and she goes, as you described, as white as a tiefling can go. <laughs> she kind of looks at Arthur and looks. Where have you been? She kind of puts Orville down. She gets up and she smacks you. Uh, and you take one point of bludgeoning damage. Oh, okay. She smacks you hard. Uh, she's probably got. She's probably a foot shorter than you, Zane. The rest of you at this point are kind of at the door. And she, she kind of, after smacking you, reaches out and gives you a big hug. You know, it's a similar thing. Back. Don't you ever leave again. You know, it, it, it kind of fluctuates between sadness and anger. Uh, you hear, don't you ever leave again. How dare you, as your mother is, is sobbing into your chest. 
at this point, Arthur kind of waves the rest of you in with a very, <laughs> very um, tentative hand as you slowly all bloodied and beaten, some of you covered in fungus, um, walk into this kitchen. And uh, Janira kind of takes a step back and goes, and who in the fuck are these people now? I hold up a finger, take a long swig. <laughs> that's okay. a, that's uh, a very long story. Well, we have time. And in the background, you hear a ding. She goes, oh, Jesus. And she kind of turns around. She opens up the, opens up the, uh, uh, the oven, um, which is a wood oven. Um, with a large cast iron pipe venting out, and she pulls out a plate of cookies and puts it there. She goes, Well, I suppose it's a good thing, uh, I suppose it's a good thing they canceled tonight. Um, she kind of looks, and she looks just flabbergasted at what's happened because her son has just effectively come back from the dead, and she's brought, he, uh, he's brought four large boys with him. She goes, um, would anyone like tea? I would absolutely love some tea. Uh, alas, to Zafin. Uh, I'm your son's compatriot. Okay. No, he's not. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't say friend this time. I said compatriot. We're partners? No, 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 no. And I turned to, I turned to Arthur. No, 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 no. I turned to, uh, Janira. No, 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 no. <laughs> alas, Thor thinks he's pretty. At this I point, at this point, Arthur kind of grabs your shoulders, Zane, and does that father-like hard squeeze. I wouldn't know it. Oh, that's right. Um, <laughs> kind of squeezes you a little too hard with the tips of his finger, fingers, and whispers in your ear, I'd like to remind you that your friend, Alastor, just saved Orville, and I think you should be thankful, son. <laughs> Zane swallows hard. She goes, okay, we have a, a Laster. Uh, I, I'd say nice to meet you. However, I'm a little uh, very confused as to what's going on. The rest of you? They seem to be a bit shy. Um, okay, we've got uh, our scarred and bloody friend. Oh, that's my Milner. Uh, excuse, hold, have... uh, excuse me. M Milner. She kind of turns to Arthur, and Arthur's kind of looking too. She goes, "Wasn't that the name on that uh, that monument?" He goes, "Oh yeah, yeah." That's do you? Nice. Uh, he kind of looks at you and goes, "Do you have any?" Uh, oh, the life of me, I can't remember the names. And she goes, "Yeah, there was a there was a monument in the far side of town." Um, it's, uh, it's a uh, black stone. It has a manticore on it. Um, it was to some, uh, uh, some war hero, um, and his family. That, um, that was my, that was my, my father. Oh. Um, I, I, pardon me if it sounds, uh, rude. Uh, it's been, an, it's been, number of years since we've been to that side of town um maybe uh you might be thinking of someone else because uh the six names listed on that monument um are are no longer with us dead yeah <laughs> things are not always as they appear okay um i'm a little spooked now um so i'm going to uh get back to you um who else is here? We're in. Okay. I was cool. stone. I can tell. It's She's kind of looking at ago. you as <laughs> as you're very tall and you're gray. About forty five minutes ago, it, it was it was a, <laughs> yeah, a lengthy walk. Yeah. She goes, "Okay, Quirin, um, that's a lovely cape you have on. Um, very shiny. Um, and uh, uh, you are." I am Zaz. Okay. Um, Zaz? Hi. Hi. 
Uh, can, can I have a cup of tea as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah most uh, most certainly will take a bit. Um, what are those small, okay. smelly things that you pulled out? Huh? Kuren, those are cookies. You've never had cookies before. The cookie. Uh, I'll it's, ask you. Um, you forget small... where he grew up. I don't know what the cuisine was like. Um, it's a small... You know what? Just, you know, try one. It's um, big, well, big... Uh, uh, I, I will happily, I will happily provide you with uh, a cookie, um, once they cool. Um, they are, they're very, uh, very hot. Um, perhaps we should, uh, have a cup of tea and, um, discuss, uh, where my son has been for the last 14 months. Killing things. Uh, excuse me? Killing things, many things. She Karen. kind of... She's looking at you, Zane, just like wide eyed, like. No, I think the proper term is surviving um, with a group of. Um... Now she's looking worried. Well, he uh, almost died a few times, yeah. Facepalm, uh... facepalm, facepalm. Face <laughs> no, no, no. Your your son's been um, very, very, uh, very saving, very people? good at doing. Not the people at the. Uh, where was it with the banshee? Many the, people the... died from that. Let's. Oh, okay, that was a bit oh, of a, I thought we thought oh, we wouldn't talk about that again. Oh, we did okay. not discuss this. From our perspective, oh. it worked out p perfectly. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Perhaps we should get some tea and some food and discuss this in a few moments. Not necessarily right now. Maybe sitting down. No, uh -huh. we should probably go clean the blood off of all of you. Oh, she looks down and Mo, at this point, you have left um, a couple drops on the floor, which is this is a very clean house. She's like, oh, what happened? And Arthur goes, Arthur kind of looks at her and goes, I couldn't explain it if I tried. Um, it'll probably be in the paper tomorrow. Just know that um, she kind of uh, he kind of looks at you, Zane, and goes, just know that apparently our son can shoot things from his hands. And she goes, he can, he can do fucking what? Just like almost in hysterics. <laughs> like this is all brand new information. <laughs> uh, uh, and he goes, okay, maybe he looks at Zane. Goes, uh, Zane, perhaps um, you and your friends sh could go to the study and um, give your mother a second to process everything that's uh, that's <laughs> happened. <laughs> Of course, of course. And I lead the others into the study. Okay, so leading them into the study, you hear the kitchen door close behind <laughs> you, followed by a... They seem like lovely people. I take it you didn't let them know you were leaving, or they didn't know you were alive. You know, maybe just don't talk to them and let me handle the situation. But why? It is quite entertaining. Um, uh, Zane uh, is massaging his 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 forehead with his at hands. At this point, you've all entered the study, which is uh, quite possibly the largest room in the house, Zane, uh, to your knowledge. Uh, just full of books and papers. Um, there's a large ottoman in the center with one of those um, serving trays. With three candles, God it's very cat. like. Oh my God, it's very <laughs> Martha. There's a lot of cats in Redwater. There's actually zero cats in Redwater. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what you're hearing is the Tabaxi can... population mating. No, um, <clears throat> it's very Martha Stewart room, and you all find a, a fairly comfortable chair. Um, Mo, you pick a leather one that's easy to clean, and you sit. And uh, a number of moments go by. Is there any conversation you guys want to have in the following fifteen minutes? He just said Mo sat in a chair, right? Yes. I'm going to sit in my own chair. <laughs> so, oh, no. so with that, Zaz, you kind of reach in your pocket. You pull out this, what can be described as a miniature chair. And you whisper to it, just pops, lands on the floor with a thud. You kind of hear in, in the kitchen, you hear, oh, what the fuck now? Just kind of like in the, in the distance. Did we make ourselves comfortable? No, do not Maybe. make yourself comfortable. But why not? Um, we are in your home. It is nice, cozy. There are tiny cookies that smell delicious. Zane and half of us are almost dead. Uh, 
Well, we'll Sorry. heal and we'll leave. Why are you um, so hasty to get out of this? Isn't it the first time in 14 months you've seen your parents? Yes, and obviously they aren't exactly uh, thrilled. Cookies! Oh. As she kind of turns around the corner. Um, and she looks like she's uh, she's kind of hastily fixed herself up a little bit. Um, and she puts down um, eight cups of tea um, and a plate of cookies. And she kind of takes a seat in another, uh, kind of in a love seat type chair next to Zane. And she goes, okay, um, who was it that had never tried to cook? It was you. Um, I want to say Quinn. Quirin. Quirin. It just sounds like Quinn with extra steps. Okay. <laughs> um, why don't you try a cookie? I'm going to pick one up. Look her straight okay. in the eye. Your son can summon lightning and eat it. <laughs> Uh, she kind of, she kind you know of. You know how, uh, you know how, um, you, that 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 meme with Binky Barnes, and he's listening to a type of music. Oh yeah, uh, kind of with the cookie. <laughs> uh, Quern, it's oatmeal raisin. Ooh, the best. I can't hear anybody. Hold on. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, it's just it's just fresh, Discord. still warm oatmeal raisin. Oh. It's oatmeal raisin cookies. Are you serious? Just... <laughs> okay, Zane, you're not a fan, obviously. Oh, uh, what do you up. think? She goes, "Well, thank you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a caterer, so I make these for people. Do you have caterers where you're from? Mm, no, most of the cooking is done by the men, which is normally just meat." Well, meat is important, and I can tell that you're all growing boys. She's kind of looking around. She's dwarfed by all of you. It's finally nice being taller than someone. Well, I assume so. And Arthur kind of comes in, and he's got a... He kind of reaches in, grabs a cup of tea, and leads against the door. He goes, so, uh, so Zane, uh, why don't you uh, enlighten us with where you've been and uh, what you've been doing? And who these strange men are. Um. Uh, the, the guys. I kind of look towards them and I kind of. <laughs> um, they're. Um, I, acquaintances. Um, we've been uh, traveling together for a while now. Hawkeye, fucking stop that. She says to a bird. No. <laughs> Alastor looks was smiling, and then the smile drops as the word acquaintance <laughs> comes up. Aww. Um. Mm. Uh, anyways, um. It's kind of hard to explain what I've been doing. Well, we're. I'm sure there'll be plenty of time once uh. Your friends uh, head uh, head to the ta to, to the inn for the evening. Um, as I, I do apologize, um, uh, what what do I address the group as? The devil's advocates. Oh joy, okay. Um, <laughs> as uh, the rest of the <clears throat> devil's advocates. Um, you don't have to call them by their name by by a name, mom. Well, no, it's 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 fine. Every young boy wants to join a cult. Um, we actually took down one. Oh, I. Well, I we we have a fantastic cult here in town. I'm sure you can just get right to dismantling. And and um, Janira kind of looks at Arthur and hits him. Just do not encourage that. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, if you have you ever heard of the flock, um, they're causing some problems. So, um, I, I have Zane. actually. Um, uh, what, what are the problems? The flock? Oh, jeez. Man, this it's place just... is all about birds, isn't it? Oh, he kind of looks at you and... Um, apparently music. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's funny. Um, he kind of looks at you and goes, I can see why you'd come to that conclusion. Um, but no. Um, well, the flock is... Uh, I guess you could call them a criminal organization um they mainly 
work out of the remains. Um, they kind of, they, they try and organize crime and uh, he's, he's trying to think of words. He goes, oh, for example, there's every time something bad happens in Dragon Tail Coast, uh, there's a rumor that it's them, whether it's uh, White Ridge being destroyed or uh, the fire eight years ago or um, or uh, about 20 years ago they tried to usurp the king um, uh, something about how goblins aren't people um, which is fairly short-sighted um, goblins as it turns out excellent bakers um, I have heard that actually mm, I bet you have um <laughs> little bit of a, a side thing there but he goes yeah they just seem to create chaos and um generally it's uh whenever someone is mugged or um he kind of looks down for a second and janira does as well and zane you kind of understand why because anytime uh somebody's alone at night and um something bad happens it's they're usually wearing wearing a feather of one of three colors so mm. the, um some something tells me that uh something bad has happened to your family besides you, you know that's enough zane stands up uh, uh i think it's high time that you guys head over to the tavern um, uh, sure. Uh, I'll just down the rest of the tea and stand up and take a bow and turn on my heel and walk out I'm the door. I'm having connection. Oh. Hello? Okay, try that again. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I'm having issues. That's strange. Um, uh, it was lovely meeting you and I, I hope to speak to you again. Uh, good evening or day, whatever it is. At this point, it's about noon. Okay. Uh, yeah, good, good day. Um, I'll just wait outside the front door. What are the rest of you doing? Taking more cookies. Okay. <laughs> Janira's kind of looking at you expectantly. And she's like, oh, I'm certainly glad you like the cookies. I did not have anything like this before. It is quite good. Uh, uh, I think uh, if it's okay with... The rest of you, I'd like to have some alone time with my 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 son, and a chance to clean up the uh, the the blood on my floor and upholstery. I can understand. I hit my mother earlier. Perfectly understandable. Oh. Uh... Let me walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Before I leave, you said there was a monument. Where is yeah. that? Um, it's not in a great part of town. Um, there's. If you head kind of north northeast, there's a part of the city called the Remains. It's pretty much just a blackened, charred field where stuff used to be. Um, it should be amongst the ruins there somewhere. I showed them the tattoo and I leave. Okay. Oh, oh! Kind of looks up the back of your shirt. Oh. She kind of looks at Arthur, and Arthur kind of is looking down. That is curious. However, best stay out of the business of spooky people. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the last one in there is Zaz. With his chair. With, in his chair. She's kind of looking at you, Zaz. He brought his own chair. She goes, did you, uh, did you bring a chair? Uh, yeah, I didn't know where we were going for sure, and I didn't know if they had chairs there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Um, well, if, uh, if you and your chair could kindly give us some alone time. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay, okay. um, thank you for the tea. You're most welcome. Uh, Z Zaz? Fly? No, Z uh, 
Z Zaz. Zaz. That was it. It was Zaz. It's shorter than that, but you got the gist. Oh. oh, oh. It's just Zaz, not Zaz. Uh... And then as he's doing the noise, he's going to make the chair move and leave. <laughs> she's just, she's got a cup of tea and she just drops the cup of tea as your chair begins to just walk out. And as... Zaz. <laughs> the nice the polite door, The front door slams. At this point, Arthur and Janine look at you, Zane. Just like... Not Janine. Or, sorry, uh, Janira. My apologies. Uh, just kind of look at you and so we need to have a chat and that chat will happen one on one later Yep. just for the sake of brevity um, it's just some parental role play yep. that's all Ooh. the rest of you um, you're outside the Sinedius family home you're facing a park what do you want to do um, well, I suppose we should find, uh, somewhere to take a lot of this nap, or, uh, um, I'm going to need to replenish these healing potions and find a blacksmith. Um, those are my plans, what about you? I think we need to find a tavern. If this is, like, Dragon Tail, camping in the park is illegal. Um... Well, let me write that down in the bylaws of Dragon Tail because that's canon now. <laughs> it makes sense. It does make sense. I'll give you that. I will allow it. Oh. So, a tavern, blacksmith, uh, apothecary of some kind. Quirin, do you have anything? You want to find a bakery and get more cookies? I was turned to stone and I'm very close to death. I'm going to eat these cookies, find a place to sleep, and then ignore this entire loud area around me. So looking down, you realize that um, Quirin took the plate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Quirin. They're gonna from inside, Quirin, just as you all realize this, from inside, you guys hear, that motherfucker! <laughs> just <laughs> briefly. What? You stole their plate. Your point. You took a package that wasn't yours. He's and got a point. I'm... Let's go find a tavern. <laughs> and I need to... I guess we have... Well, I have two reasons to go to the remains now. Okay. So, what is the first thing you're all looking for? Tavern. 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 Okay, investigation check from everyone who's looking. Okay. Uh, my investigation, I believe, is shit. Eight. <laughs> yes. Quirin, um, you're confused by large cities. It is loud. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I'm, Third I'm also, I'm, I'm just looking at all the sights and sounds and okay. people. And I'm 13. It. Zaz, are you making one? Yep. Oh wow. <laughs> Holy shit. So, Mo, you spot it first directly across the park <laughs> because luckily the DC for this was literally 10. <laughs> literally 10. I don't know this city. The, the city people and then the hillbillies. Yeah, apparently. Uh, you notice it directly across the park. Um, you see the sign, the Scarlet Ale House. Uh, walking in, it's a, a fairly nice tavern. Um, there seems to be a number of people having their lunch. Uh, there's a female elf, uh, slow, slow gray creeping up, um, in her blonde hair. Uh, she's kind of, um, uh, rinsing out some, some tankards and stuff. She looks, looks up and goes, oh, lovely, out of towners. Um, what can I get for you all? Uh, we're going to need what? Um, how many rooms do you have available? Um, as of right now, we have three. Um, I'm sure. Better we... than nothing. Sure. Um, I'll bunk with somebody if they want. But yes, we'll we'll take all three then. Oh, excellent! All right, that'll be um, it'll be a grand total of five silver pieces a night. No, I've got that. Sure. Okay, so it'll be, be uh, uh, one. You could be uh, let's say one gold, five silver. Or 15 silver, if you like. Um, sure. Uh, here you are. 
Excellent. All right. She kind of reaches back and pulls three keys with things. She goes, all right, um, if you need any food or ale or uh, anything like that, um, don't hesitate to ask. She goes back to her, her business. Oh. So does, do we want to talk about why there's so many birds here? Or? The birds are chasing me. But why you, like... Goliath hunter, my mother Yeah, but what about it. the other two birds before that? Oh, that I have no idea. Those were some sort of demons. No, they had wings. I'm pretty sure they were birds. They were demons. I thought of the bodies. Wrong. How many of these hunters are there, Quirin? I don't know. I didn't even know they Who's... existed. But you're Goliath. Is this not something you defend yourselves from all the time? I stayed at home reading scrolls. My mother fought things. I, I'm not a fighter. But they never uh, you came clearly to your are. I don't know. They stayed in my hut. I healed people. That is what I did. Uh, oh, okay. Um. So I do have a question for you, though. Um, were you the only person that had um, uh, magic or divine capabilities in your tribe? Oh, well, my father was a healer. He was the priest. So was there some sort of protection around the whole thing? No, 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 no. Hmm. Well, that, I mean, interesting. did you see my mother fight things? She just kills. There was many women like that. Many. She was simply the strongest one. Oh, that sounds like a lovely place. Yeah. And now it's just you and your my mother, mother, if which... she alive, survived. Yeah. You could probably go to it if they don't fight herself. No problem. Tell me more about these women and these big, large, grey ladies. So while that conversation's happening... I ordered dinner. <laughs> They're dead. I figured. <laughs> yeah. So it's at this point, it'd be lunch. Zane, the conversation only takes about an hour. Um, it's not a happy one. Yep. Um, they tell you that you can stay there the night. Um... But uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, they're very cross with you. But they're glad you're home. Are you going to be staying uh, staying there? Is there anything you want to do amongst Redwater? No, not really. Okay, so you're just staying at home? Yeah, I guess. Okay, I will get back to you then. The rest of you. Like I said, it's about <sighs> noon. This conversation about women goes on for, let's say, an hour. As you all eat. Um... Provided you eat if you want to. If you do, please mark down three silver pieces for the meal. Mm -hmm. um, an hour later, the conversation picks back up into... How's so, it going? So what... Um, so what is it? Do you guys have a dress code? Is there a... a like, do you guys have like... Like, tell me more about your... your the way that things work. Quirin? You... I'm trying to figure out how... What do you mean how it works? It's clothing and no clothing. Women can walk around wearing whatever they want. Men normally dress more conservative, like me. Full armor for clothing. That way it's, you know, modest. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> god, this is... This seems like backwards land, and I love it. Um, so, um... Uh, so it was like a full functioning society. Was it a trade or um? What did I saw? So what did, what did the women look like back where you're from? Huh? What? Are all the women where you're from covered in fungus or tree limbs or, or whatever? Yes, they have clothes. <laughs> well, that sounds fun. Does they know where we are? Uh. uh He's I'm sure he'll talk in your head, Quirin. I swear to God, he is going to get another all to the face. <laughs> For being conservative, Quirin, you sure have a, a temper when things try to talk inside your head. I have described to you what it's like to have a god inside of there. Do you think other things talking in my head feels good? No, it's like screaming. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but what if you have... Um, 
Right, but what if you've got someone else in your head that's really nice and says good thing? Once Would something has peeled back your skull, everything feels like it's peeling back your skull. Hmm. I don't believe I've had that uh, feeling before. No. <laughs> Ooh, the sarcasm! <laughs> <laughs> so this conversation devolves, as we typically do, for sake of brevity. Another hour goes by. Do you guys want to do anything? Um, well, if you don't mind, I've got to go find a blacksmith and an apothecary. If anyone wants to come with me, I'm I sure that... that. Um, sure. So myself and, and Mo are going to go, Zaz. Um, I think Quirin's probably gone to bed if he's not already asleep. It's only about 2 p.m. Um, during this time, I'm going to be rolling uh, a cigarette. Hit, hit dice and volatile cigarettes. Okay, you're taking a short short rest? Yes. Okay, yep. No. Um, I'm going to hang about in case Zane comes looking for us. Okay. Uh, Zane, just to confirm, you're not going to look for them? Nope. Okay. So that wasn't, me, that wasn't me narrating what I was doing. That was me saying it to Alistair, by the way. Oh, gotcha. Hmm. All right. So Alastair and Mo, what are you looking for? Um, I'm going to be looking for, first of all, the blacksmith to take care of this nasty crack in my sword. Okay. Oh, my God, my cat. Okay, so go ahead and make a... Um... <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Make an investigation check. Oh, boy. 16. Okay. Uh, you're able to find one actually relatively close called the Hammer and the Sickle. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ooh, let's see. As you walk in, there's a there's an older tiefling, male, red, uh, red skin. Uh, his horns kind of bend back like a ram's horns. And he's, he's hammering on something, and he kind of turns and goes... Yeah, can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm looking for someone to do some uh, repair work on, on my blade. Okay, uh, let me take a look, see. And I'll Ooh. pull my big fuck-off sword and lay it on the counter. Yes. Yeah, I can do that. It'll take, like, uh, uh, you'll probably be able to get it tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, and any, anything, um... Is there any uh, extra, any ex extra you'd like to add to it, or, or, or whatever? Um, uh, it is, it is your canvas, my uh, friend. Well, I'm a little swamped, but uh, kind of looks it over. He goes, "Well, I could fix the crack. Could probably make it a little bit sturdier. Maybe a bit, put a bit more weight behind it, if you like." Um. You know, uh, probably do a little bit more damage. <laughs> Plus one. Um, my, uh, my eyes light up slightly. It's like, uh, uh, you are speaking my language, sir. Um, right. uh, what, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to ask about cost right yet, but... Um, well, well, you should be perfectly honest with you. It's a lot of material and it's a fair amount of time. Um, probably be 15. 15 gold or 15 days? 1500. Uh, oh. Um, well, uh, I suppose. Uh, so what is your name, sir? Uh, it's, it's Amar. Amar. Um, well, I currently don't have the funds for that, but I assume I'll be coming into some money uh, soon. So the, uh, uh, the crack in the sword, how much would that just cost? Uh, about 40 gold. Sure. No problems. Right. I would love to get that done. All right, I can I can do that for you. Um, I have some more work to do, but yeah, if you come by tomorrow morning, that'll be done. Excellent. And right on cue, I because I, I didn't forgot this was on my notes. <clears throat> I put the changing blade because I'm pretty sure that's the one that had the crack on it. Yep. On the thing, I have a certain a similar issue. Uh. <clears throat> That's a, that's a unique one. Um, it seem, mainly seems to be a wood issue. I can, I can fix that for you. Again, 40 gold, but uh, 
all in all, it's, it's only a, it's only a hilt, really. Uh, it's enchanted, I can tell that. So I'll see what I can do for you. I give him forty gold. Okay. All right. With that, he goes. Okay, I have uh, I have some work to do. A uh, busy time right now. Everyone's wanting blades, so <clears throat> I gotta get back to it. Thank you. I'll see you both uh, bright and early. And he kind of goes back to his work. Excellent. So one more stop off there, Mo, and uh, find myself an apothecary so I can um, make sure that other party members don't get turned to stone because it seems like we'll be fighting these quite a bit more. Um, I don't have any healing potions either, so I second that. Right. Um, okay. And then other than that, uh, bathhouse. Um, maybe we could go to uh, the remains and find ourselves a, uh, a, uh, a, a nice bed for the evening, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Typically, you the, the subject for later. I'm gonna look oh. for an apothecary. All right, go ahead and make an investigation check. Oh. Uh. Not one in sight. <sighs> All right, I, I was uh, looking for something else. Um, <laughs> uh, nope, I got nothing either. Yeah, you guys look around for quite a while. Um, wandering through town, actually, trying to find it. And as you wander, uh, you're less and less mm. likely to find it as you find yourselves in a very dirty and grungy part of the city, hopelessly lost. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Looking <is> out <clears throat> through the houses, you actually realize how far you are and how long you've traveled. At this point, almost an hour, because you can actually see the burned fields of the remains. Huh. Right, so if memory serves me, uh, the basin should be on our right, and we went the other way where the basin was on the left so we're god um is there anybody yeah, around there is a couple people around uh you see one guy with his hood up having a cigarette kind of looking at you too uh sir um can i ask you a question throws a cigarette on the ground stamps it out and walks off i think All we should right. get out of this part of town on Aster. No, oh, no, come on it's not that bad it's just uh, asking for directions we'll be we'll be fine is there anybody else around they'll probably stab us first Oh, we stab them back. You don't have your sword, Alaster. I do have a hand axe and a whip, though. <laughs> okay. I, I lead him back the way we came. Go ahead, and I need you to make a survival check. Ooh, that's a new one. This one, this one I'm better at. Both of us? Yep. 17. 17. 18. Oh. All right, you guys are able to... Uh, find your way back to the docks and We're like back to the tavern. Big dumb jocks in a horror movie. Yep. <laughs> You're able to. You pretty much wander around for probably a good two to three hours, and uh, find yourself back at the tavern, having gained no ground. At this point, it's the sun's about is about to set. Well, I believe it's bedtime. We can probably go get um, a potion tomorrow and. Well, we've seen a lot of places. I'm, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's something else we've missed. Um, well, good night. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. So as you wave good night to Mo, you both walk in the same door. It's awkward. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm right. After slumber you. party. I forgot. <laughs> um, All so right. Bed down for the evening. Okay. Zaz and Quirin, I swear to God, if you guys are playing rock paper scissors. <laughs> Actually, no, I wanted to have a conversation with him. Okay, so while that's happening, you two. <laughs> and my cat, apparently. <laughs> what of tabaxi in this town? Apparently. Uh, Quirin that's, um, that's Mr. Perkins, the tavern cat? No, it is not. Sazen <laughs> hmm. okay. Quirin. So stick with me on this one, right? 
Zaz. Zaz is kind of off in his own world. I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> oh, hello. Well, many things are coming from other places to this plane, right? Mm hmm. You have come from somewhere else to this plane, right? Yeah. Well, things continue to happen, come from various different places. It is like things are being brought to this place for no reason, or to try and stretch thin the gates holding everything together. Okay. The more this goes on, the more things seem to pop out of nowhere, like the unicorn or the little modron or everything like that. So if All we right. do find you a way home, I do not believe that you should take it. We Go do not on. know if it is going to be one way, or we have no idea if you're going to come back or not. It could be you living your life for another three years and you being shunted back here for no reason. If we do find you a way, that is good. That way we know we can send you back. But if you come back again, that is going to be the problem. That's definitely a theory, but if I'm able to go back, and if the threat is that I might return, I could live with that. True. I want to go home. It is good for you to go home. But if you are coming back again, if things are not safe, not if for anyone, any plane. Because it may seem like everything is going to be tossed into turmoil. Well, no. It's definitely up in the air. We don't, we don't know for sure. That's the thing. Well, prudence is best. Giving time. I definitely have some time to think about it. But not about as much time as you have to return the plate before it gets weird. I'm not returning this. Bring the plate back. Why should I do that? <laughs> it's not your plate. <laughs> so neither of these Quirin, potions, but I still use them. <laughs> Quirin, please in your inventory put one piece of Sinedius family china. <laughs> please. Oh, I'll put this. Sacred plate. <laughs> <laughs> I must take this to the Holy Land. The Zinedius family inventory. Minus one, <laughs> one piece plate. Of All right. So is that con that conversation? Yep. All right. You guys heading to bed then? I'm going to my own room. Yep. So how are the rooms working? You have three rooms, four people. Who's bunking up? I'm bunking with Mo. Okay. Sounds good. So. In the night. Zane. Mm -hmm. I assume you go to bed in your own room. Yeah. You're at home. It's uncomfortable. But you're here. As sleep takes you, you're awoken to a poof on your chest. <laughs> Opening your eyes and expecting the book. Instead, you're greeted with the face of Orville. He kind of is looking at you and he's, he's pawing at you, trying to wake you up. Looking outside, it's about 2 a.m., maybe 3. It's dark. He, he kind of realizes he's woken you up. He kind of goes to the door and he starts scratching at the door. You realize... Orville has to go out. And historically, it was your job. So you head down the stairs, careful not to wake up your parents. You put a simple cloth leash on Orville. And the cat. <laughs> My god, Radar. What is up with him tonight? Uh, they don't like when they can't get in and out of rooms. Fair. But if I leave the door open, it disrupts the stream. Yeah, yeah that's the problem. You head outside. It's kind of cold. It's a spring evening, but it's dark and it's silent. And Orville uses 
the facilities in the first way. But looking down, he still has his tail raised, and you realize he needs to go to the facilities the second way. <laughs> you walk Orville for a good ten minutes into the forest. Zane, can you make a perception check for me, please? All right. Oh. This is what happens when we split the party. We all asleep. We don't know shit. Yeah, you guys are fast asleep. Twelve. You're startled, and suddenly there's a sound uh, to your left as you're kind of focused on, you know, Orville, you know, whispering yourself, for the love of God, Orville, go poop. You know, please poop. You know, <laughs> the thing that you do with the dog when you want to go to sleep, but the dog has to go, right? Otherwise, it leads a mess. And you look, and there's there's a tiefling and a dwarf, uh, probably younger, in their 20s, kind of walking along and kind of swaying. They both got a bottle and a paper bag in their hand. They look and they go, they look at you and go, Hey, buddy, why are you taking your mop for a walk? And the dwarf kind of, <laughs> Yeah, why are you taking your mop for a walk, buddy? And they take a big swig. I just kind of roll my eyes and keep, uh, keep moving. Blast them both. Zane, could I get yeah. you to make another perception check for me, please? Mm -hmm. 21. This time you, you spot the person coming towards you, but not so much the person first. What you do see first is bounding across the park um, is a streak of golden fur on a very simple leash, um, followed behind by a smaller redheaded human woman with big eyes kind of wrapped up. Um, it's Faith, uh, the NPC that you had encountered earlier and she's she's kind of shivering and she's following this puppy around she looks up and sees you and she kind of waves excitedly i uh i wave and i walk close enough in which i can start uh using a weakened mind all right so you get close enough and she kind of slips the the leash onto her wrist and she um oh excuse me she signs to you. I didn't know you had a dog. Um, as long as I'm speaking, can we just pretend it's communicating? Yeah. Like, I don't have to state it. So, time. Zane is reading uh, sign language, and she is receiving uh, Awakened Mind. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the sake of this. Okay. Um, this is Orville. He's, he's 18 years old. <laughs> she kind of she kind of looks at you surprised. She goes, oh, who's an, she's an old boy. And she kind of goes down and begins petting him. And at this point, Orville decides to poop just as she's petting him. <laughs> she kind of, she kind of chuckles. She goes, uh, wish I could make mine do the same. And this little puppy just <laughs> kind of looking at Orville as Orville's pooping and Orville's just kind of, you know, just accepting what's happening. Um, not really squatting. And this puppy's like bounding in front. She goes, cute. She looks around the park and she goes, which, which house is yours? Um, I point in the direction where my home is. She goes, she, oh, I, I, uh, you're on the other side. I'm, I'm closer to the docks. Uh, Is I'd it? like to sign to her, uh, what are you doing out so late? <laughs> um, she, she messages back. She goes, uh, dog was whining. Uh, he's taking me on quite the little adventure. He kind of, Zane kind of chuckles. She goes, she goes, well, anywho, I should, uh, I should get going. I, uh, I have to get to bed, but maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll see you around. Uh, maybe tomorrow? Uh, sure. She kind of smiles and she begins heading by. She walks off the dog leading away. At this point, you hear the dwarf voice that you heard before go, Hey, baby, why don't you come on over here? Followed by, Yeah, why don't you come over here? And as you turn around, you see Faith still just walking. And the two 
drunken, not so gentleman calling after her. They go, hey, we're fucking talking to you. So, yeah. She keeps walking. And Will goes, you stupid bitch. And he reels back and he throws his bottle. Oh, with a nat 20. Hitting Faith right in the back of the head. I'm gonna take Holy her shit. out. <laughs> she Holy goes down on, on her knees. Zane, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to um hold for it. Sorry, I didn't think I'd be. Um, I would no, like to use um is there anything lit in the area like torches, candles? No, not really. It's pretty lamps. dark. No? You can you can see fine because it's it's dark vision. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's dark. But there's nothing like street lamps or anything. No, not really. Not in the center of the park. Okay. Um, I would like to. Um. Let's see here. In an act of thaumaturgy, I would like to start making the ground shake. Okay. And I would like to um, use Awakened Mind to warn them that um, that's more than enough, fellas. They kind of look around for a second. One pushes the other and says, I think someone is fucking with us. He goes, yeah, well, we are by the, by the university. There's a lot of... Fucking smart asses. Where are ya? Why don't you come and say it to our faces? How far am I from them? Uh, about 120 feet. Okay. Can I move closer? Yep. Yeah, move I do. Closer. Okay. Move up closer. They kind of go, oh, Look, it's the guy walking his mop. Goes, yeah, walking his mop. One of them pulls out a blade. Is you guys close am I now? About maybe 30, let's say 45 feet. Okay. You know, you got something to fucking say? Um, yeah, actually, I, I do. Um, I, I, I suggest you go home and go to bed. That's a suggestion. You're casting suggestion? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. It's a save, right? Wisdom save. They're not very wise, but with a natural 19, they are. Holy shit! Yeah, sorry. Come on! I'm kind of drunk. Lucky. They are, so I'll roll the disadvantage. Deep. I will. It's a, that's a 17. What is your save? Damn. Um, I don't know, Tanner. I think your what save is, is 16. Save? I think your save is 16. Yeah, because you have plus... For proficiency. No, your save is, is 17. Con? No, it's just be uh, your spell save DC. So I think you're a 17. We'll double check that. Kind of looks at oh, you and goes... It says 15 here. Oh, that might be incorrect. We'll figure that out. Okay. They kind of look at you and they go, Oh, look at this guy. He thinks he's a... think he's a big, powerful spell. Boom! And with that, suddenly you see a pair of hands come up on either side of... Uh, like, on... Uh, like outside the pair of them and their heads are just clacked together um, hitting both of them as Faith a little bit of blood trickling down her neck is now going to use a key point to use Ooh. Flurry of Blows <laughs> and that's a nat 20 so as you're trying to cast these spells Faith just knocks these guys out and you look down and this tiny little redhead just begins pummeling the shit out of these out of these two drunk guys. She kind of backs up for a second, and you look, and she's still got the puppy attached to her one arm, and the puppy looks terrified as it's been swung around. She kind of, uh... Yeah, pretty close, actually, Zaz. Thank you. Um... She looks at you and goes, I appreciate, she signs, obviously. I appreciate the distraction. 
how did you do that? Uh, she signs back. You don't grow up in this city without learning to defend yourself. You're not wrong. She kind of looks down and realizes the carnage she's just made. <laughs> As oh. both of these guys are just, un they're unconscious. Right? Their, their status is, is, is little people. She goes, she signs back. I won't tell if you won't tell. Zane nods. Are you okay? She signs back. It hurt, but I'll be all right. It was an improvised weapon, so it didn't do too much damage. How about I walk you home? She says. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now she says, she goes, I, I like, I'd like that. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Oh. With a happy cliffhanger. Oh. Oh. Is that the sound of I, getting a long rest? That is definitely the sound of yes. everyone but Zane getting a long rest. Because, oh, fuck. Zane needs it. Well, we'll pick up next session on your walk home. Maybe you can get some. I don't know. Get some sleep or? <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs>